work in? I mean, besides, have you been able to go to any of the indoors? Yeah, we've been in the indoor, and that indoor is awesome. Um, we've probably got pretty efficient at practicing inside over the last three days. So today's Thursday. I want to say it was either last Thursday or Friday we went outside, and you'd have to go back and look. Let me think about this. Um, yeah, last Thursday, Micah, and maybe three other guys through. Maybe that last cold day, you kind of thought we could get out. And uh, we went out that day and we took batting practice, so a little over an hour and played about three innings. That's about as much as we could stand. We were able to get out last week to play catch and take ground balls. Um, and pitchers were able to play catch outside. And then somewhere there during the weekend, we had to start going inside. And again, that there are indoors. Um, we're fortunate to have that. And um, we've kind of learned how to um, practice inside. I mean, a lot of times our inside practices go in and just kind of get the bodies going and go to the bat cage. And it's been a little bit more of a, full practice inside other than hitting heading into i'm oh, sorry we're, we're sitting side by side here it's kind of an echo um heading into this weekend you got an idea of your rotation we saw arkansas gave us their yeah. three starting pitchers i think mississippi state has as well yeah we're starting uh patrick monteverdi uh against arkansas starting micah dallas against Ole miss game two and um, starting Mason Montgomery game three. And in all those games kind of have a plan to piggyback the starter with another guy just based on pitch counts. and Based on really missing a weekend last weekend um, with inner squad and building pitch counts up, even though we were still able to get, I mean, get the pitch counts up because we we're able to go inside and throw bullpens. But that's kind of the plan as of right now. For the people here that haven't seen Monteverde, uh, what what can they expect from him against Arkansas? Yeah, it's uh, when I say average, I say it's an average big league fastball. It's 90, 92. It's nothing that'll overpower you. Probably could go get more if he has to. Um, breaking ball change up. Um, a guy that needs to be able to locate, be able to pitch ahead and account. Um, Probably most days he's going to have the change up. You know, it, it's always kind of up in there if a guy has a breaking ball that day. But has a decent feel for pitching and um, definitely probably got moved up a day based on some things that have happened. Uh, but at the same time, we've got a lot of confidence in you know in him being able to go out and pitch. All right, we'll go to uh, Don Williams. Hey, Tim, uh, following up on Monteverdi, uh, with him coming from a lower level school, what do you, what do you know about his background in terms of, uh, uh, like I say, st starting out at a lower level school at Seton Hill, and then uh, did he just, was he just a guy that was kind of a diamond in the rough and kept developing to, uh, to, as you say, have a major league level fastball and now be getting your day, now getting your opening day uh, start? And how did he... I the story on how he kind of came to y'all yeah I would say transfer portal he's a guy that hit the portal and, and was available and um you know he was a guy that was pretty highly recruited during the summer during that time and but definitely was a guy that did not go to college throwing that hard it's definitely a guy that's came on um, following up, what has the competition for rotation spots been like did those three guys uh those three guys kind of established themselves pretty easy, pretty easily or pretty obviously as the top three, or, or, or are there two or three other guys in there who are really pushing to pitch this weekend? I really would say we would have waited to watch them pitch last weekend um, before we made a decision. And since we didn't play last weekend against our own hitters, we made the decision after the weekend based on experience instead of 
what's going on right now. Yeah. And what, uh, who are some of the guys that you alluded to that you could uh, piggyback? They'll kind of be your first options to piggyback with. Yeah, the... I mean, you're, you're looking at Birdsell, Brandon Birdsell. You're looking at Chase Hampton. Um, Nick Gorby will be in that mix down the road. Levi Wells is in that mix. There's quite a few guys. Um, Andrew Devine could be in that mix. Um, there's quite a few guys that, that could – you know, you could flip them if you wanted to. I'm missing some guys, I, I can assure you. All right, let's go to uh, Eric Kelly. Don, another guy to be in that mix would be Brendan Gurton. He's throwing the ball really well. Eric, we uh, I'm not I'm not hearing you. <laughs> hey there, coach. Jeez. Uh, uh, in terms of where you think you are, obviously, I know you mentioned the first time you talked to us that you weren't in kind of the need to, to ramp things up those first couple of weeks. So where do you think you guys are in terms of game preparedness, game, game readiness going into this weekend? Well, that's uh, last weekend definitely threw a kink in that. I think all the teams going to this tournament are probably in the same boat in some form or fashion. Um, we've got two weekends under our belt where we were getting to where we could play seven or eight innings in a day. And so we're working up to nine innings um, as far as guys playing in a day. And um, we got an echo there. Did y'all hear that? And uh, we're definitely a week behind in that department just based on the weather last weekend. And then one other question, uh, what effect does that have, if any, on, you know, your comfortability playing guys who don't have maybe as much in-game experience at, at this level as opposed to starting guys who maybe have more experience under their belt? Yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely a comfort level with some guys um, at the same time. He, if we bring guys here, we feel like they're good baseball players and going to try to do our best to put them in the best position to have some success over the weekend. And uh, the good thing is, is, is again, all six teams are in the same boat. and um, We want to do what's best for the long haul, not necessarily what's best for just this weekend. All right, next up, we'll go to Nico Sanchez from the Daily Torridor. Howdy, Coach. Uh, first of all, um, you guys have some pretty lofty expectations this year. You guys were ranked third nationally by Baseball America, D1 Baseball, Perfect Game, and you guys had numerous preseason all-conference guys. So what is it about this particular group of guys that makes you believe that this can be the squad that gets Tech over the hump in Omaha? Yeah, I mean, first of all, all those, all those expectations and all those polls – to me, if there's ever a year, it's based on where you were last year at this point and not what's going on this year. Those people have no information, really, no data over the last year to do that. Um, everything you do in college baseball, you have to earn the right to win. They don't give you trophies. They don't give you first place based on the polls. Um, the pitching depth is there. As far as over time, if we grow and develop over the spring, we've got a chance to be as good as any we've had. Um, and offensively, we've got a chance to put as much pressure on the other team, either by um, really swinging the bat or by, you know, putting pressure on by giving them, by basically uh, running the bases or handling the bat, whatever, you, whatever um, the case might be. 
at the same time, I tell you, I mean, if you just look at the polls and you look at our roster and you go, uh, you lost John McMillan, who'd been here four years. You lost Bryce Bonin and you lost Clayton Beater and you lost Brian Klein. Just those four guys alone. And you're going, okay, you're going to rank us as high as we were. I don't think we've earned that right yet. I really don't. I think it's more based on where our program's been over the last four or five, six years. Okay. And uh, also, you uh, you mentioned that Micah Dallas is going to be starting this weekend. How much did um, how much does uh, injuries to guys like Dobbins and Becker uh, affect that decision, or did you guys always have him starting this year after coming out of the bullpen last? We we want to give Micah every opportunity to start because he wants to. Because I mean, obviously, when a guy starts as a freshman, um, that's exactly what they want to do, and. Um, I think Micah would have been in the in the top three, whether whether those guys got hurt or not. And now at the same time, if it's what's best for our team for him to be in the bullpen down the road, that's what we'll do. Awesome. Thanks. When you start talking about winning in postseason. Thanks. You bet. All right, we'll go next to Sean Dillon. Coach, uh, who are some of the freshmen that we haven't been able to see yet that would be people that uh, Texas Tech fans should uh, will get to know uh, throughout the season because they've earned their way to uh, seeing their way on the field. Yeah, that's uh tell you, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of freshman pitchers that uh, are going to be really fun to watch. Um, and what's interesting is, is, um, I mean, one's by the name of Jamie Hitt, left-handed pitcher out of Houston. Um, Chase Hampton out of Kilgore, Texas, right-handed pitcher. Nick Gorby out of Florida. Uh, he's got a chance to be really good. He, you won't see him this weekend. He's not ready yet. Um, Levi Wells. Uh, I'm pretty sure Don's listening. Don, I, you asked me a minute ago about the pitchers. Brendan Gurton's throwing the ball really well out of Shattuck, Oklahoma. Um, Drew Woodcox is a guy that once we find a place for him to stand, uh, could be a guy that could really impact the game with his bat at some point. Um, and then when you say freshman again, are we talking true freshman, COVID freshman? Because, I mean, you still got Ron back in the mix there, and uh, Jace Young in the mix. I was more talking about the, the, the new freshman, but – that's crazy those guys are freshmen, is it not? Wild. Yeah, and you're going, what does that mean? What does it say that you are you have the ability of having Jace be a freshman and you have Nate as a freshman and you, you have all the their, their experience to uh, help some of these younger players? Yeah, I mean, those, those two guys definitely have some games under their belt. They did a good job. Um, in the summer, both of them went out and played in the summer, um, got some at bats, got some experience that they didn't get otherwise. And, um, those guys are definitely not walking around like they're freshmen, um, in the, in the big picture of it though, um, for your program, those guys, you, you want those guys to be able to pursue their dreams, which would be next year. In the you know in the grand scheme of things, as far as pro baseball goes, so it really doesn't change anything how long they're here. Thanks, coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go to Don Williams. Don, you're muted. Yeah. Okay. Tim, can you update us on? Uh, let's see your your pitchers who are out right now. Uh, Rustowski and Dobbins, have they, have they had their Tommy Johns and what's their kind of timelines? Um, Dobbins has not. He has not had it. Um, we're waiting to get him in. Rustowski has had it. Um, he had it with the Indians doctor over Christmas time. Uh, it, it was really good. He probably had it a good two to three weeks earlier um, since they could get him in up there. Um, Austin Becker had his while back back in maybe the start of the fall. Yeah. 
where where is uh, Dylan Carter right now? You said a, few, a couple, two or three months ago, you said that he was projection was maybe April. He would be back. What, what's it looking like now? It's still April. Still April. Okay. And he'll be. Uh, a, he'll. By the way, he'll be a really nice compliment when he comes back. I mean, left-handed back can really run. Excited about that when the time comes. Who will you bat uh, in that uh, leadoff spot? Who are your candidates? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say the candidates would be Max Marzak, um, Dylan Noisy, um, Easton Merle, Drew Baker, probably one of those guys. Yeah. Who is going to play second base? Jace Young. Jace right now? Yeah. How, uh, how much second had he – how much second had he played? What did he primarily play in high school? He, he was a shortstop in high school. Um, when he went out to Santa Barbara last summer, he played second and first. So he worked exclusively on the right side of the infield. Okay. How's he kind of looking in that – How's he making that adjustment so far? Looks like a big bat standing at second base right now. Like that's what it looks like. And now defensively, he's sure-handed, plays catch really well. Um, he looked good. He works hard at it. I'll go to let you go to Collier. Okay. You heard what I said, Don, about Gerton, right? Yeah, I did. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I want to leave him out. He's he's a tough kid. Well, lock, since Don's lock, asking lock, all this positional stuff, uh, what, what's what's the plan at third right now? Um, Parker Kelly will start opening day. Um, you know, Parker's really come on. Um, he's always played good defense. Um, you know, there, there's going to be a possibility of a few guys going over there. I would say that on both corners. I think time will tell on that. And, uh, but Parker would be the guy opening day. And behind the plate, are you going to let Braxton go the whole weekend, or are you going to try to get Nate some time back there? We, we haven't decided. Haven't decided. Braxton is definitely your opening day guy. I guess could you give us a, a, your thoughts on Arkansas going into the opener and what you expect from Coach Van Hornstein? Yeah, they're going to throw um, – I don't know if the guy's a fourth year or fifth year guy, uh, Zebby Vermillion, um, big right handed pitcher, fastball slider, change up. Maybe if you want to call a slider or cutter, you can. Um, good arm. Guy's got a lot of innings under his belt at the Division One level. Um, you know, those guys do a really good job, do a good job with their teams. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're coming, they're, they're probably mixing in a few more new guys than we are at this point. Um, they got some tough kids in their lineup. They don't give you outs. Um, and they got a really good kid that's, his last name's Battle. He's out of San Antonio. He's going to play shortstop for him. Um, I think his dad played in the NBA. Uh, we were told about the kid way early, like way, way early. It'll be fun to watch him just to kind of see where his game is. Uh, he went to the same junior college, Noisy. Uh, you know, Dayton Moore's son plays second base for him. I said GM for the Royals. Uh, he was an early graduate that played last year for him. Isn't that a shame? 20 games. Graduated from high school early and got 20 games in, season canceled. Um so it, it should be – they got a bunch of those guys back. They got Franklin back in center that was there last year. Uh, a little guy named Braden Webb that played for Dusty Hart over at Grayson County playing left. Um, you know, I got a kid named Nesbitt out of Coppell. Seems like he's been there five years. Uh, I got the, a catcher back for his fifth year. So got some experience on the field. As far as going past this weekend, how does this affect your your series right afterwards? You guys are supposed to play, what, Tuesday, Wednesday. Are you guys going to play five days in a row, or have you 
even thought that far ahead. I'm assuming you have. We're we're trying to. We we don't have games right now Tuesday, Wednesday on our schedule. If you saw something we did, those people canceled. And we've actually called in the last two hours. We've called three programs in the last two or three hours during practice. Joe has trying to trying to line up some games. In a perfect world, we get something um, after a day off, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, and then play five days in a row. I mean, we we'd love that. I got know. ahead of myself on the schedule. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll go back to Don. Jim, I was curious uh, what your plan is for uh, uh, two, or th two or three guys this year. Rombach, are you uh, you looking at playing him kind of the same as last year, some first, some catchers, some DH? You got it. You bet. And Stillwell, some, some catchers. Stillwell worked at first and catcher. He's kind of in the same boat. Yeah. And what about Kurt Wilson? Kurt Wilson's really worked exclusively at shortstop the whole year, and it's moving very good. Which would be when's the last time? It, when's the last time he's played short? He's kind of been jack of all trades. Ken, Kentucky series when we went to Kentucky, Michael okay. Davis got sick twenty minutes for the first pitch. That was the last time. It wasn't that good either. But he's he's a he's a high school shortstop with a. You know, really good arm and really came back this year committed to playing to playing a position, hasn't pitched any, and it's worked out really good. Um, I'll share this with you. Cal Conley hasn't inter-squatted with us this spring yet. He's he's had some things he's had to get right as far as health-wise. And so Kurt's going to get a chance to show he can play short this weekend. So he's going to be your starter? You bet. What so what is Connolly what has Connolly had? I don't even know if I can say this he's healthy now. But because of last, last weekend would have been the first weekend he was able to get live at bats. Yeah, okay. And we got snow. So, since the fall since the fall, basically? Since the fall. Yeah. And so I'm not saying we won't throw him in there. The one thing I was thinking throwing bat in practice this afternoon was was one thing is nobody's had any at-bats in the last, what, seven or eight days. So we're not – I'm not going to be shy about putting him in there if we need him. Yeah. I guess Wilson with a 97-mile-an-hour arm, though, uh, he can uh, – he can he can get it to first with no trouble. He's going to six-hole, you're going to be out. And he's always read to ball off the bat as good as anybody in our program. He's he's played all over the field, and um, I tell you, it's uh, I would think Kurt's gonna, you know, really uh, embrace the opportunity that he's getting. Uh, where are uh, what's Drew Rid Drew Woodcox and Brayton Brayton Runyon? Where are they standing in terms of uh, possibly getting playing time early? I know you. Yeah. Like Oh. Um, Woodcox is a guy, you know, he had a decent fall. Um, again, we're trying to figure out where he can stand right now, where he can play him every day. Um, Runyon, I tell you last weekend, as it stands right now, could have hurt Runyon as far as going into opening weekend. Cause he was for two weeks, he was having as good at bats as anybody. So that's a decision we'll have to make between now and Saturday on whether to stick him in there or not. But at some point, he's going to get his opportunity. And it's a matter of what you do with it. And, I, and I'll say this, with all college baseball rosters, right now, there's only nine guys going to get to play. And everybody has more depth than ever. And uh, I don't know if that's the case with us as far as the depth goes but we've got great competition. In other words, we might not have the numbers, but we've got guys that have flexibility and we can move them around if we need to. Are you, are you viewing Runyon more as a uh, third baseman right now or corner outfielder or where exactly? Corner, I would say more as a corner outfielder. Yeah. 
and left and primarily left primarily left field, right? Correct. Left or left or right. And play right also. He showed he can play both. He's actually done a really good job. Now, that's going to be a tough one because he he's tell you, he shows up to play. <laughs> 